Hey fellow birdies, and welcome to another edition of Mr. Songbird's Writing Mukbang. Hope you've been having a good week. Like I said, the last video, it, I filmed it well, but when I <laughs> looked at the video, I realized the sauce made my lips like totally orange, <laughs> and I just couldn't even take myself seriously. So I decided to refilm it with a slightly different meal. This is something my wife made. Homemade, you know, sausage Alfredo. Now, she said go with spaghetti for the noodle type. Mm. Gosh, it's been months, maybe a year since I've had this. I've missed it. Now, I want to bring you folks up to speed on how my book is coming along. So far, I'm closing in on 17,000 words written. And in all likelihood, I'll probably hit it by the end of today. Now, that puts me about, I'd say about halfway. Perhaps more, actually, because although I'm about to hit beat four of the seven beats, the third beat takes the longest by far. The fourth beat is pretty much a moment. The fifth beat is the second longest beat, but still pretty, it's not as long as the third beat. And the sixth and seventh beats are pretty short. No matter how well you, you know, write and how well you edit, often you're going to find yourself realizing you'd add something additional early on, like perhaps an additional detail to a scene. Like in the story, I originally had it where one of the antagonists doesn't actually appear to the main character. Instead, you know, the you know, male lead, you know, finds out about him and he comes up and he basically rushes off. And I realized that doesn't work very well. I want him to be an enemy for the main, you know, for, you know, character, both the male and the female leads. And for that, I need to have make a good impression or rather <laughs> a bad impression. Mm. She said to go with, you know, some feta cheese instead of the Parmesan. I think it worked really well. Well, I'll probably stick with the Parmesan going forward. Mm. Now, one thing that's important to do is be able to handle realizing, okay, I need to go back and do this without, you know, suddenly bogging yourself down and spending like five years, you know, going back and adding little scenes, you know, and then realize you have to correct those scenes. If you get bogged down in the beginning, it's very likely you're not going to finish the ending. My favorite drink, chocolate almond milk. Delicious and surprisingly low calories. Well, what? Like one glass is like a hundred something and low hundred. I mean, now what I do is if I realize I need to add something in the scene earlier due to the way I, you know, write my you know, rough draft, I'll put a note and simply put like something like in parentheses add you know, additional detail for this scene or like make her encounter the you know, antagonist and dislike him personally so she's willing to go off and 
like dig into them, try to find information. One thing I often have trouble with, and this is a weakness of mine, is that if I keep writing the same thing day in and day out, I have a tendency to get stuck a little bit or bored. My primary method of handling that is, simply put, I like to be working on multiple things at the same time. In this case, I'm, since I'm challenging myself, I can't do too much of that. So what I'm doing is I'm doing some practice writing apart from my main writing. Because yeah, working on, I'm practicing writing like someone who's really, really, really skilled often inspires me in little trick and helps me uncover little tricks by how they wrote. One of the things that I you know, found myself doing in the course of you know, my writing is I found that the main male lead need to be developed more. I've been doing so. The main female lead, I feel like she's got a pretty uh, set personality. But I need to add a bit more there. Like, not personality-wise, but more like a few extra details, if that makes sense. A character should be vivid, but not necessarily completely predictable. Like, if the reader knows what the character is going to do before the character, you know, does it, it kind of, like, if you know, everything happens exactly as expected, it's, there's not much of a story there. Let's see now. Speaking of you know, characters, one thing I find myself doing is there is this one character who had a very bit role, like you know, small role, like they just appear for like one scene and then they go away. And those can work sometimes, but in this case, it didn't fit. Yeah, you know, like why wouldn't we see this character again? Like, yes, they're just an interviewer for. A company, but this is a small company. She should interact with him again if he exists. So what, what I ended up doing is I folded his role, or I'm going to fold his role into another character's role. And often that really helps. Because, how to put this? Some It's better to have one well-rounded, interesting character than three names. Now, some writers can get away with it, like George R. R. Martin, who I am a big fan of his work, has managed to get away with having a lot of characters that are basically, you know, they appear like once or twice and they, you know, die. <laughs> Probably why he has so many characters, because for most series, the casualty rate would just be, you know, you'd have no cast. Often find that when in doubt, it's better to fold. Like if a major cast member, can, if a cast member, an important character can do perform the role, it's probably better to have them do it. Of course, this can go excessively. Like this is why you have omnidisciplinary you know, scientists who seem to know everything about science just because they are one kind of scientist. It actually doesn't work that way in the real world, believe it or not. Like, just because you know, like, 
geology doesn't mean you're familiar with infectious diseases. I do think that you know, there's a better than even chance at this point that I should be able to finish you know the story by the end of the month. And upon you know finishing it, the next step is start doing all those edits that I've basically been you know putting off for good reason because again it can you know really bog you down if you you know focus on editing everything perfectly at the wrong times. Like additional details, like it's one thing to you know, correct like a couple small things, like I don't know a bit of grammar or something. But it's another thing if you find yourself rewriting and rewriting and rewriting. That was the problem I had with you know, the Mage Trials, the first couple times I wrote it. I kept rewriting and rewriting. Like the original version was roughly 50,000 words. And it was written in, I want to say 2012. And it needed editing. And rather than you know, just do those you know basic edits, I ended up rewriting it. Turned into like a and a couple short stories. And then I you know, kept rewriting it. Each time I think it got a little bit better, but I think that the original version, if I just simply you know, focused on making that good rather than going back to the drawing board each time, would have probably turned out to be a fairly good you know, book. But the way it is now, I wouldn't change it. Well, I might go through one time and just make sure I didn't make, because I, someone mentioned in a review that there, I did have like a grammatical error or two. So I might check that out myself. But now. That takes care of that. Now, fellow birdies, I'm going to bid you a fond farewell. And the next video should be on Wednesday at the normal time. Bye, fellow birdies.